Hi, I'm Claire Lynch and I play Rachel in The How and the Why. So when you first read the script, what was it about it that sparked your interest in the show? It is such a layered script and it just sucks you in. Um, partially because these two characters um, speak so much in subtext and so much is about what they're not saying. Um, they're both brilliant, like cuttingly brilliant, and but they're really scared to be vulnerable with each, with each other. So instead of talking about the hard stuff, they talk about science. So um, as you're reading it, you're wondering what they really think about each other, what's really going on between these two people. And then there's also the fact that there's a really slow burn on the exposition in this show. There's sort of like that traditional um, narrative plot structure that you learn about in school that is like, now is the exposition, and now is the inciting incident, and now is the rising action. And this show isn't like that. The whole show is slow pieces of exposition because the audience is a fly on the wall. So you're constantly learning more things about these characters and they're constantly learning things about each other right up until like the last five minutes of the play. So it keeps you guessing the whole time. Last time you were on the Theater B stage was the majority, a one person show. Mm -hmm. And so now how does it feel like to have an actor across the stage from you again actually acting off of? It is neither harder nor easier, okay. um, but it is very different. Um, in the majority, I had no one to rely on but myself. <laughs> Um, and there was also just the added element of the camera and feeling, I felt so exposed on, under that camera lens. And this is, you know, so in the majority, majority I was talking 100% of the time. Now I'm talking 50% of the time and listening 50% of the time, but connecting with my scene partner 100% of the time. So that's a very different challenge, but I can't think of anyone better to do that with than Carrie Weckstein. So. What are some other challenges you've had to uh, work through while working on this show? Well, because of COVID, we had to do our first uh, about week and a half of rehearsal over Zoom. So that was definitely a different experience, but it actually ended up being kind of a gift that we spent those first couple of weeks really delving into table work and character discussions. And because the script um, is so multi-layered and so much is about what isn't being said. We really talked through the questions that the script leaves unanswered and trying to answer them for ourselves so that we had a clear vision once we ended up in the space. As you've read the script, is there anything about this story that resonates with any of your uh, personal experiences in life? Because this is a deeply personal play. Yeah, so every character that I play, my, as an actor, my method of characterization is that every character I play is a little piece of myself blown up to 10. And so this character is um, all about a need for validation and a need for people to, like she wants to stand up and say something and for everyone in the room to clap and say, that is the smartest thing I've ever heard. Um, and yeah, you know, I get that, especially as an actor, right? Like so much of being an actor is going up on stage and wanting people to applaud. So, you know, I relate to that. I'm not proud, but I do. Um, she's also, you know, a total smart ass, which, <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, sorry, that's mom nothing and dad. Like you <laughs> Why do you think it's important that Theater B does the how and the why? The thing that I love about this show is that it talks about feminism from a totally different angle than we're used to talking about it. It's not directly about women's reproductive rights. It's not directly about women in the workplace. Um, what it is, is it's about um, what it means to be a woman from like an evolutionary perspective. Like what is the power of being a woman who yes, bleeds once a month, who goes through menopause, who is a mother, who is a grandmother. What does that mean to the human race from a biological perspective? And it's not in opposition to men and it's not in relation to like laws or society. It's, um, it's very grounded in like biologically, what is it to be a woman? And finally, what's, what's something that when the audience leaves here and goes home after seeing the show, what's, what's something that you hope uh, 
what, what is something you hope they take with them? You know, everything that I just talked about, um, the, the different angles of feminism, uh, also what it meant to be a feminist um, 10 years ago when this play was written um, versus in the 70s and 80s when Zelda, our older character, was um, coming up with her different hypotheses and coming of age as a person, as a scientist. Um, there are also the questions about nature versus nurture and what it means to be a family. So there's a lot of different angles that you could take um, walking away from this play. Any final thoughts? Come see the How and the Why at Theater B. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you, Claire. Thank you.